back them up, boys. Cowboy Connection, ministry that they've been doing for years, reaching into arenas and places, rodeo grounds, all kinds of places that, that I can't reach, but they can. And doing a glorious thing. They're soul winning machines. Savior, I come, quiet my soul. to bring them up here today because they have asked us if we would license and ordain them. Now, they've already been licensed and already been ordained, but they, they wanted to come under our covering here at Word of Victory. 
And they came on board as members living out in the Wyoming area. Amen. And everywhere they go, they're an extension of what goes on right here even. It says, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you, Jerry and Andrea, be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. Yes. Do the work of an evangelist yes. and fulfill your ministry. Hallelujah. Amen. So we tie our faith with you and believe with you in agreement with you that this ministry will increase, will go higher, and will fulfill the purpose and the plan of God in your lives. I say destiny shall be fulfilled. Lord. Amen. Praise Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Every, uh, when I, I see that video and uh, every one of those faces represent a story. Amen. Amen. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> we've seen God deliver people, uh, you know, out of uh, hopeless situations. You know, I, uh, there's a gentleman on there that a year ago his son committed suicide. There's uh, another gentleman up there that uh, addicted to alcohol. And uh, many of those faces have, have went through uh, some terrible uh, uh, battles. <clears throat> one couple, uh, one of the ladies on there we were baptizing, lost her uh, year old baby. Uh, and I mean, so there are some terrible things that I see uh, on their, uh, when I see that video on their faces, but I also know that God delivers us out of them all, amen? Yeah. Out of all the troubles, out of all the heartache, the brokenness, that God is faithful. Yes. And I got to tell you guys something here this morning. I'm excited to be here, Andre and I, with Dave and Kathleen. I'm so proud of these guys. I'm so proud of the things they do for the kingdom. So proud of the things they've done for this community, this state, and this world, amen? Amen. I just wish Dave was here. I, the last time we were here, he was, I think, in Africa then. But uh, anyways, uh, it won't be long and he'll start speaking, uh, what, like that, whatever that language would be. <laughs> oh, it's English? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, he's going to be speaking it pretty good then. <laughs> <clears throat> but anyway, uh, we pulled in here last night. We, uh, we live in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and we got in actually... Uh, Thursday night, had a meeting up by uh, Grandview, Texas on Friday night, but I uh, got in here yesterday, and you know, we get to see Dave and Kathleen, well, Kathleen, about once a year, and uh, went to uh, supper, wanted to go, but I tell you what, God had laid on my heart that I needed to stay back, and God had given me a word last night uh, for this body, and so I'm excited about it. And uh, so bear with me, we have a lot of scripture, but uh, I believe if you'll hang on, uh, we're going to come through this uh, in victory and uh, experience the power of God like never before. Amen? See, here, here's the thing. I believe in the church today, there's people that are pursuing the miracles. We're pursuing the power of God and the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. But unfortunately, we're not seeing it manifested in such a way that, that we're believing for. Amen? It seems as though the power of God is not as much or doesn't equal the power of God in uh, what we read about in the Word or the early church. 
But yet we know what the Bible says. God says, I'm a God that changes not. When he said to the leper, when the leper came to Jesus, and uh, 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 Jesus simply said, what is it you want? And the leper said, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Jesus' reply was simple, I'm willing. Well, guess what? He's willing today. Amen. His will is the same today. Amen. So why are we not seeing the manifestation of the power of God like what we read about in his word? Uh, <clears throat> you know, the thing, there's, there's one, and I don't know, it's, uh, for lack of a better word, there's an ingredient we're missing. You know, like, um, if, if we, uh, and I'm not a cook of any kind, but uh, Andrea is, and if she would make something and forget uh, an important ingredient, you're going to tell it pretty quick, amen? But in our lives with God, we are going uh, forward, but we're missing a very important ingredient. Be with the lack of it or without it, marriages are falling apart. Uh, there's a discord in the body of Christ or the church. People are mad at each other and pointing their judgmental finger at the pastor. Amen? <clears throat> Let me read a scripture that gives us a good picture of what I'm talking about. James 3.16. I didn't say John 3.16, but James 3.16. Um, let me turn to it. James 3.16. <clears throat> For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. Whew. You wonder why the churches are not growing? You wonder why so many, so many uh, 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 Christians are in, uh, in uh, discord, or it says here for we're envy, self-seeking. That self-seeking really uh, jumped out at me. We're living in a time where it's all about us. Well, it's uncomfortable today. I don't think I'm going to go to church. It's a little cool. Or it's, in this case, it's a little hot. I don't think I'm, well, you know, I just don't feel like going to church. Or, or um, you know what, I'm busy today. I don't have time to spend in God's Word or in prayer. When it's not convenient, we are, we, uh, we, uh, are quick to go by uh, spending time with God or His people. Um, and as a result, it says confusion. I would say not just many churches, but the world is in confusion. There's mass confusion in the world today because people are self-seeking. They're bitter. They're envious. Uh, I mean, the thing that really is alarming, it says, and every evil thing. You know those demons that Dave's talking about this morning, you know? You know what? Uh, Africa or any of those third world countries, if you were, uh, will, you know, the, 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 uh, the demons uh, are more evident. You know, the, the, the sin, and, or you can even go in our country today in the big cities, L.A. or Chicago or Detroit, and, you know, the evil is prevalent. It's pretty well seen. I remember one time, Andre and I, we went to uh, Grand Rapids to minister at a, at a uh, mission. And I was really praying that this meeting would get canceled. Amen? I didn't feel comfortable. I'm real comfortable in the cowboy setting. You know, I don't care uh, <clears throat> if they turn a bull out while I'm preaching. Don't bother me a bit. Don't bother me if a dog runs across this platform when I'm preaching. I was preaching one time and they, at this buffalo ranch, and a baby buffalo, they left the doors open because it was hot. And this buffalo that they were uh, raising with a bottle, amen, he came in the door. <laughs> and didn't, I didn't, I didn't uh, miss a beat. 
Amen? But going to this mission, I was out of my comfort zone. So Andre and I, we drove, at that time we had a little old motor home, and we drove it up there and parked on alongside the street, and, uh, and there was, uh, it was in the bad part of Grand Rapids. And um, anyway, we get out, and I lock the doors, and there's, there, there's it looks like gangbangers over here on the corner, and there's prostitutes over there, and there's people gathered up over there doing who knows what, and they're hollering back and forth at each other. And I looked at Andre, I says, it's going to be God if this motor home's here when we get back. <laughs> So we go and we, we go off over there and you have to ring a bell, a buzzer for him to unlock the door to let you in. Amen. And so we go in there and uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the world, I mean, the things that you see and God just moved miraculously at that meeting. He, I'm sitting in the front, lo, front row. I got my message all prepared. I'm telling you what, five minutes before I preach, he changes the message. And it ended up being a, it was a tremendous thing. But what I'm talking about is in those places, sin is prevalent. You can see it, it's pretty open. But in this kind of a community, or in the Cheyenne, it's hidden. But it's still there. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Every evil thing is there. I, you probably figured out this one ingredient that's missing. Love. 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 It's a pretty basic principle. Amen? Amen? But John 3, 13, 34, Jesus said, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, Amen. that you also love one another. Amen. Here when the scripture says new, it's not talking in regard to the form or the quality, but it's talking about the reference in time. It's not saying, hey, this is a new thing that all of a sudden we've come up with. It's just saying, hey, it's, it's now, now. Uh, we need to be walking, living in love now. Amen. Amen? You know, in this church, listen, I don't have to preach about faith. You guys have been, you guys know faith. You guys know. You guys have been taught. It. That's one thing I love coming here because you guys know the word. You've been taught the word. <clears throat> but I do believe that the enemy would love for us to go with, with uh, uh, disappointment because we know what the word says, but yet we're not seeing the fruit of it. Why? Because I believe we have lost this grasp of the importance of love. It sounds like I'm ringing up here pretty loud. Could be me. I want to go to John 15, uh, and I want to read uh, chapter 12 through 14. Again, Jesus said, this is my commandment. It's not a suggestion. Amen. That you love one another as I've loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his family. Didn't say that. <laughs> friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. Jesus laid down his life for us. Why? Because of love. 1 John 3.16 says, By this we know love, because he laid down his life for us, and we also... Uh-oh, now we're uncomfortable. We don't like this part. We cut it off right there. Amen? We also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Amen. See, that's what Dave did when he goes to Africa. Do you think it's... Do you think... Do you think uh, it's all roses when he does that? Do you think he enjoys being gone from Kathleen and from home for all this kind of time? Being in another country when this world is in such upheaval and dangerous? No, I'd say he's laying down his life. Amen. Doesn't the Bible tell us we're supposed to be imitators of God? John, 1 John 4, 8 says, God is love. Amen. You know, folks, I got to tell you, though, 
we're headed into a good direction right now. I just turned my notes over. <laughs> and here's the deal. The power of God, the miracles, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit are all wrapped up in this love of God. You want to see the power of God, you start get just loving on somebody that's maybe unlovable. You want to see the power of the Holy, Man, uh, the Holy Spirit manifested in this place, you start serving this place. I mean, you serve God, but you do it in this place, in this house that God's called you to. Listen, if you're here, you have to believe that God's called you here. You, you know, you just didn't, you, you're just not showing up just to sit down and be entertained. No, you're called to be here. Why? Because you have a gift, a talent, and an ability to serve God in this house. Here we go, Galatians 5, 6. Right here, here it is. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything. Amen. He's talking about whether you're circumcised or whether you're not, doesn't really mean anything. But I love this. But faith working through love. Listen, that faith, the Bible says we've all been given a measure of faith. We grow in faith, and I know if you stay here, you're going to grow in faith. But the power, the manifestations of the Spirit, and, and uh, what, uh, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit, the moving of the Holy Spirit, will all come to place or realization, but it comes through love. Praise the Lord. You know, some Christmas time. You know, it's always, it's always fun. I love Christmas. I'm a big kid, amen? amen? I love Christmas. My family makes a big deal about it. My wife and I, we live right there with... My mom and dad had 10 kids, amen? They adopted 12 more. The ones they adopted were all special needs children. I'm the oldest son. I tell people, <laughs> no, the reason they had so many kids and adopted so many more, they wanted more just like me. Uh, nobody believes that one. <laughs> but anyway, you know, there, I mean, you come down our road. My sister, I'll tell you what, Cheryl, oh, yeah. her house is decorated. Yeah, you know, Cheryl. Her house is decorated. I'm telling you what, it, uh, it looks like uh, Disneyland almost. And I'll tell you, then we try to have some up because we can't look like we're against, you know, <laughs> Christmas. Anyway, and you know, the gifts and the, the stuff, I mean, it's just a big deal, you know. And, uh, but you know what, in all of that, you know, uh, I, I, <clears throat> the world has gotten crazy, by the way, with this gift thing. But anyways, the real, the real fun is when you start doing. Not just getting or receiving, but when, if you want to, hey, if your life is, is, you don't have the joy, pray to God to show, for him to show you somebody to, to love and somebody to do for. Well, that's where the real joy is. When you start doing for others. Amen? It's all about that. It's all about love. Now we're to John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, you'll not perish, but you'll have everlasting life. The key word, for God so loved. Amen? You see, love brought Jesus to the earth. Amen. Love took him to the cross. Amen. Whew, I can hardly stand still on this one. But the power of God raised him from the grave. Amen. See, love brought Jesus to this earth. Just like Dave going to Africa, you think Jesus, you know, I mean, you think he really wanted to come here? You think he really wanted to leave his home, leave the throne, leave the Father? He did when it come to love. Yes. Love brought him to this earth. Amen. Love took him to the cross. But uh, the power raised him from the dead. Yeah. That's what we as Christians are looking for is the power. Yeah. Amen. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure most of you here today are saved. Most of you have asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. We have to come to re a realization. In ourselves, we can do nothing. But in God, there's nothing we can't do. Amen. 
And so when we get a hold of this, that the love of God brought Jesus to this earth, and the love of God caused Jesus, when it came to the time of the cross, they didn't have to force his arms out. It didn't take two men on his arms to make them. He willingly laid them out for them to stake to the cross. Love did that, but it was the power that raised him from the dead. Guess what here? <clears throat> because of it, we have an inheritance in heaven. Amen. Uh, because of love, we have rights. Because of power, or because of love, we have the benefits. We can look up some of the benefits in Psalms 103. Blessed be the Lord, oh my God, who, who forgives all my iniquities, who heals all my diseases. Those are just some of the benefits. Forgiven sins and healed bodies, I'd say is a pretty good start. But it's all because of love. It's all because Jesus is the firstborn. Romans 8, 29 says, He might be the firstborn among many brethren. In other words, to be the firstborn, there's got to be some secondborns. Amen. There's got to be some coming after. I'm the oldest son, but I've got, there's, I've got five younger brothers. Not to mention the younger brothers that have been adopted. I've got a little Down syndrome adopted brother. Uh, he's 18 now. He calls me Sheriff. <laughs> he don't never call me Jerry. Never. It's Sheriff. I got him a little Christmas gift. He opened it up. He goes, oh, thanks, Sheriff. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. But there are some secondborns. Jesus is our big brother. Amen? Colossians 1.18, he is the head of the body, the church. Get a hold of this. Ephesians 1.22 and 3. And he... God put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. So consequently, all things Come on. are under our feet. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'm telling you what, we are the body of Christ. As a result, the Bible says all things are under his feet. He's the head, we're the body, and because of Christ, because of the love of God, because of the boundless, measureless love, we are his body, all things are under our feet. Oh, I'm telling you what, folks, that will bring joy. That'll bring confidence. That'll uh, cause the power of God to flow through us freely without uh, measure. You know, there's nothing wrong with the power of God. There's nothing wrong with God. It's not that God has gotten old and he's gotten decrepit. You know, when we read about what he did there, splitting the Red Sea and causing manna to fall down from heaven and cause the walls of Jericho to come down and cause David to defeat Goliath and, and the Holy Spirit uh, caused Mary to become pregnant and, and all of these things raised the dead and cleansed the lepers and shut the mouths of the lions and all these things he's willing to do for you today. Amen. Whew. I could just about run. <laughs> Man. <laughs> and all this is wrapped. You know, Andrea loves wraps. She loves these. She likes going to uh, uh, Subway and she gets the wrap. You know that. <laughs> Flatbread and has it all wrapped up. The other day we went to this thing, this backwoods kind of a restaurant. It looked like, you know, uh, I don't know what, but it didn't look like a restaurant. Amen? <laughs> we go in there and I'm thinking, oh, I don't, Andre's pretty picky about what she eats. She eats grilled chicken, nothing fried. Amen? And I'm thinking, no fries. She's not going to find nothing but a hamburger and fries. Amen? But they've had, they, uh, she was rescued because they had a wrap. So she had her uh, chicken in a wrap. 
She was satisfied. Folks, I'm telling you what, the power of God, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, the blessings of God, the benefits of the Lord are in the wrap. But the wrap is the love of God. What you need to do is, I'm telling you what, you need to, you need to find you somebody. If you have, if you're, if, you know, here's the thing, you need to pray uh, and ask God to show you who you need to love on. And I'll tell you, a good place would be in this body, in this house. You find you somebody. And maybe you feel like, hey, you know what? This person has offended me. I don't think I like that very much. You know what? They don't treat me very good. That's the first person you need to go and love on. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> Glory to God. You want to know why? You know what? Uh, I read in Jerry Savelle's uh, uh, newsletter last month, there's a thousand pastors a month quitting. A thousand pastors a month who are quitting the ministry. Do you want to know why? Because so many people come into the house with a judgment, with a wrong, selfish heart. Well, he shouldn't preach that. It offends me. Or they shouldn't do that. That offends me. You know what? While I'm on that subject, I just want to turn over here real quick. I don't want to get into a uh, thing here, but uh, the Lord just dropped this in my heart. Um, sometimes we feel like, wow, that, that pastor, they just spend too much on the offering. They spend too much time talking about money. Well, First uh, John 4, uh, 17 uh, tells me, it says, And whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need, and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? Where, hey, I haven't got off my track. I haven't got off the message. It says, how does the love, there it is, <laughs> of God abide in him? Guess what? If we would do what we're supposed to do with our finance, the pastors probably would never need to take up an offering. Amen? But here again, it's all about love. Andre and I are praying about some financial things, and I didn't even tell her this uh, yet this morning, but every night I go to bed, I pray, Holy Spirit, I pray you'd minister to me tonight. Amen. Well, I believe he did last night. I'm not sure how it's all going to come out. <laughs> but uh, it was talking about, you know what, if you're believing for, uh, for more finance to be able to do more, then uh, sow according to what you want to see. Uh, don't wait to, to, to get it and then uh, give from, the, from it. Uh, give ahead of time. Amen. Amen. All right, now let's get back where we need to be over here again. <clears throat> so all things are put under our feet. Satan's under our feet. Resist the devil and he'll flee, it says. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Every name is under the name of Jesus. Yes. Ephesians 6 gives us a list of weaponry that assures the victory. Romans 8, 37 says, We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. More than means super victorious, overpowering in achieving abundant victory. <clears throat> and it's all wrapped up in this love. You know what... Uh, you know, we, uh, before we left home, uh, we had a couple that I was contacted by. The husband wanted us to come. This was uh, just before, a week before Christmas. And he says, my wife and I are really having a problem. Um, she's wanting, uh, uh, she says she doesn't love me no more. They got a 12-year-old girl. They've been married 25 years. So we went over there, and uh, we kind of surprised him because uh, he said that she did not want to talk with Andrea and didn't really want to, talk to us about anything, so we just showed up. <laughs> just came, up, came, knocked on the door and visited with them and prayed with them and just tried to convince her through the word that, that you know what, we can't go by what we feel. Amen. You know what, if we're waiting for feelings to, to cause us to stay in our marriage, then uh, we're pretty weak. Amen. Because I'm going to tell you something. There's times, believe this or not, I'm sure there's times when Andrea looks at me and says, I don't know uh, what, uh, why I did what I did. No, not really. 
<laughs> but anyway, um, listen, we can't be moved by circumstance. We can't be moved by what's going on around us. We can't be moved if we see somebody we think is more attractive. We can't be moved if we think we could, if we could do. What is that? It's back to that self-seeking. Self-seeking. And if we're self-seeking, what's it say? Every evil thing uh, is there. Confusion in every evil thing is present. Anyways, and they were supposed to go to South Dakota to visit his family for Christmas. And she came up and said, I'm not going to go. And he asked me, what do I do? I said, well, I think you ought to go. I said, I think you ought to go up there and let her have Christmas here with, with, by herself and, and just let her see what it's like without you. So he went. He called me after Christmas and said, well, I got home. And, and she told me she wanted a divorce. And, uh, you know, to me, what, what was, what's absent there? The love of God. Huh. Uh, <clears throat> see, we have to remember that uh, love never fails. Amen. Uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 13, 8, uh, love never fails. Never. So if your spouse is acting ugly, love on them. If your kids are not acting according to uh, the way you want them to act, love on them. That don't mean you never spank them. If, but you see what I'm saying? Love on them. Love never fails. God is, listen to this. God, is, God gave me this one morning. It was a Saturday morning here a while ago. It just simply said this. God is relentless of his pursuit of mankind. Because of his great love for mankind. See, we were all, uh, well, I won't say we all, but, you know, I, I kind of grew up with this attitude, and I thought, like, you know, the doubt, or the, that God was just waiting for me to screw up so he could knock me in the head. <laughs> That's a lie from the pit of hell. God is relentless of his pursuit of mankind because of his great love for mankind. Yeah. Ephesians 2.4. But God, this, 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 this scripture follows it right up. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us. Amen. See, folks, his mercy is boundless because his love is measureless. You can't put a, a, a measuring stick to the love of God because it's, it's without end. The Bible says he's not willing that any should perish. His will's not that any should perish, but all should have everlasting life. Amen? That's why he's so merciful. That's why he's so willing to just, just uh, give us time to uh, come around to the realization of our need for him. And I'm glad he did for me. Glory. I got saved at 10 years old watching Billy Graham on TV. And you know, it, a year ago, the Lord laid it on my heart that, you know, I read a deal that, that he had been kind of fighting some discouragement. Of course, his wife's gone, and he's fighting, uh, uh, what is that, Parkinson's, and then he's losing his sight. And so I wrote him a letter. And I just simply said, you know, I just want to thank you for your years of faithfulness to God. As a result, I received Christ watching you on TV at 10 years old. I'm now in full-time ministry preaching the Word. And I got a letter back, not from him, but from his staff, and said, you know, we, we, uh, we really appreciate uh, what you wrote, uh, Mr. Graham, and it blesses him. And uh, we want you to have this. He sent me a book uh, uh, and signed. A, uh, sign, uh, no, he didn't sign. He just sent me this letter and this book. And, uh, and I'm so glad I did. But in that, since I was 10 years old, do you think I lived a uh, perfect life? No, I dropped the ball many times. Many times gave God every right to boot me not only out of, out of the kingdom, but out of his family, so to speak. But because his love never ended. Uh, that's right. 
It wooed me back. Yes. Amen. All right, here we go. We got just a couple more scriptures. We're going to wrap her up. 1 John 4, 17. And this one brings a smile on my face. Love has been perfected among us in this. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. <laughs> As he is, so are we. So how is he? Perfect. How is God? Is God sick? No. Is God broke? No. Is God a, a, a lack in anything? No. So as he is, so are we. Boy, praise the Lord. So as he is. So, oh, hallelujah. How is he, Fonda? Oh, He's everything. Every he don't lack in any area. No. Does that mean we won't have battles? No. Jesus had battles, didn't he? Yeah. The Bible says in Hebrews, that says, Consider him who endured such hostility from sinners. None of you have sw uh, uh, basically sweat blood because of sin. Amen. It says consider him. He went through some battles. Yeah, he went good. through some, some major warfare. But you know what? He came through in victory. Every time. So as he is, Every time. so are we. Every time. I don't care, guys. You go to the doctor and he gives you a bad report. You go back. So as he is, how is he? He's, he's, he's not sick. You go to the banker, the banker says, you don't got no money. So as he is, I'm not broke. That, brings, that makes me think of two years ago, Andre and I getting ready to go on this trip. See, when we leave in January, we're gone for nearly three months. And so uh, my bookkeeper called me on Saturday uh, afternoon, a late afternoon. She says, I need to visit with you uh, tomorrow after church, so don't leave. I said, well, okay. She, and it's bad news. I thought, bye. So I went to bed that night, tried to go to sleep, and tried to, you know, and that bad news just kept coming back to me. Amen. So anyway, we go to church, and, and we walk in there, and she meets me at the door and says, uh, now, now don't leave, don't you leave. I got a visit with you after church, and I'm telling you, it's bad. I just wanted to slap her. <laughs> Why couldn't she tell me? Right there, right then, right? Get it over with. I'm not, run, I'm not one to run from it. I want to face it up and get it over with. Amen? Glory to God. Whew. So anyway, I'm sitting there during the worship, and I mean, I'm starting to vibrate. <laughs> Am I going to prison? Did we write bad checks? I mean, what is the deal? So after church, I go out there, and she says, you better sit down. She says, this is bad. I said, I'm not going to sit down. I said, the Bible tells me all my need is met according to his riches and glory. The Bible tells me no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. So she goes, oh, well, you don't have no money. Well, we're fixing to leave Tuesday. And she tells me we don't have no money. I says, well, I, I proceeded to quote some scripture to her. And I says, I, you know, this is God's ministry. This is God's deal. He wants us down there in Texas. He'll get us there. I'm not going to worry about it. Before I got to my truck, before I, listen, before I got out of the church, this couple came up, handed me a check for 500. Amen. They didn't know nothing about nothing. Monday, I go to the post office. There's $6,000 in the post office. I'm just telling you what. You know, we have got to see ourselves as God sees us. Yes. Yes. You are the children of God. Yes. Right. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're not somebody's whipping post. Amen. Listen, you don't have to be second best. You know what we need to do? How many times have we seen somebody do something? Or maybe you know of somebody in this world that has done something courageous. They've done something that took courage and honor. And you think, oh, I'd like to be like that. I'd like to be able to accomplish that. There is nobody that's done nothing more tremendous than Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, so as he is, so are you. Whew, boy, I tell you what, that's exciting. 
Praise the Lord. John, uh, 1 John 4, 18 goes on to say, it says, uh, uh, there is no fear in love. Glory to God. Uh, we see these uh, t-shirts, no fear. Amen. The real no fear is knowing God. Amen. There's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Amen. Because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. So I guess if we have a fear problem, we need to love more. We need to let the love of God go f flow through us more. The devil's trying to do something to us or put something in us that's not supposed to be there. That's right. Amen. Amen. Fear. You know, I, when I first started roping, I'd get so nervous. And I started late in life. I was 22 and, and had to learn how to ride and rope. Some still question my riding, but that's okay. But, uh, and I'd get so nervous. And I'd ride out of the arena after I got done. And it's, uh, I'd have somebody say, well, did you jerk your calf down? It's, I don't know. It's all a blur, you know. I couldn't. And so I'd get so uptight, you know. And so finally I, I started quoting scriptures before I rode in the arena, before I ride in the box. I'd say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And then I'd say, for God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Tells us right there, God didn't give us fear, but he did give us love. But it's up to us to walk in it. Amen? This word perfect appears in there three or four times. It, it just means complete, accomplished, and to carry through to the end. I want to back up to 1 John 4, 11. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. You know why the world is not coming into the churches? Love. Because there's no love. They don't sense the love. Do you know why the bars are full? <laughs> false it's, not, it's false love, exactly. The world don't understand real love. They don't, I mean, it's not, I mean, it's, 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 it's not their fault. They just haven't experienced Jesus Christ, the author of love. And so when they go to the bars or they go uh, 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 to these places, you know, it's, it's, it's because they need uh, a relationship there. They're looking for this love, this acceptance. Yeah. And we as the church, we have got to make sure that we, when I don't care who walks through the doors, that they feel the love, they feel the acceptance. Yes. Amen. And I'll guarantee you what, this building ain't big enough. If we make our determination this year in 2012 that we're going to walk, live according to the love of God, you will see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. You'll, you'll realize the power of God. You'll see miracles you never saw before. And you will experience a growth because the world needs love. Amen? <clears throat> if you love with all, you will trust God with all. And I want to close there. I challenge you this year to love God, to love people like never before. Amen. In that video, it showed uh, the prison. I've been there three times. And the first time I went, the prison is down in this low spot in a little valley. It's in Madras, Oregon. And I went with this pastor and a couple other guys. And, and so as we topped the hill and we come down and we saw, and I saw that prison, uh, I, uh, my eyes welled up with tears because I realized what that place represented, a place of brokenness, mm -hmm. destruction, mm -hmm. men's lives that the enemy has destroyed. And if it wasn't for the grace of God, I could have ended up there. Amen. As a kid growing up in Michigan, I loved to drag race. What if I, in my time, and it wasn't legal drag race, and I try was, what if I hit somebody? Yeah. And when I got there, and here's 100 and, 119 men, and I stood up in front of them, and I said, you guys need to know that God loves you. But I love you. And I broke down in tears. 
in front of these inmates that are supposed to be hardened criminals. And voices from out in the crowd start coming back, we love you. And I said, you know, it doesn't compare to the love of God. For God so loved, you can put your name there, Amen. that he gave his only begotten son. Listen, folks, he gave his only begotten son. He still gives. He still gives mercy. He still gives grace. He's not withholding anything from you. But we have to walk and live by love. Let's stand to our feet. What I want to do is I want to bring this to... There could be somebody... One of the cool things about coming to, to places that, that we don't, uh, that we don't, that we're not at a lot, you know, we don't know everybody. And so nobody can think that we're picking them out of a crowd and, and trying to pick at somebody because uh, we don't know. But there could be somebody here that's, you've never received Jesus as Lord. You know, you might, you might have been in church for a year. You might have been in church, you could have been in church your whole life, it doesn't matter. Unless you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, you are not going to heaven. Amen. The Bible says we have to repent and ask Christ to come into our heart and to be our Lord. So I want to give that opportunity this morning. Amen. So pray this with me. Father God, I ask you to come into my heart to be my Lord and be my Savior. Today, I receive you. Cleanse me, create in me a new heart, a clean heart. Thank you, Father, for the price you gave for my life. In Jesus' name. Is there anybody here, you prayed that prayer. You got, Catherine, do you have some Bibles or something that you give out, some literature? Is there anybody here that prayed that prayer? Listen to this. Don't hold back. Don't say, well, I don't want to be embarrassed. I don't want people to know. Listen, the Bible says, God says this. If you're, a, uh, Jesus said this. If you're ashamed of me before man, I'll be ashamed of you before my father. I don't want that. I don't want to miss out. So if that's you, uh, we're not going to ask you to come up here or do anything. You just slip your hand up and they'll bring you a Bible and some literature. Anybody this morning, you prayed that prayer, receiving Jesus, receiving his love. Anybody? Yes, we got two right back there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Do you realize there's a party in heaven? The Bible says when one receives Christ, there's a celebration. Amen. I got the God bumps all over me. Praise the Lord. Anybody else this morning? You prayed that prayer and you received Christ as your Savior. Anybody? Don't miss out. Anybody? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Did anybody give, give you guys anything yet? Or she's, oh, she's got it. Okay, awesome. Praise the Lord. All right, now, here we go. What I want to do is I want to give you an opportunity, you, you Christians. We're going to put a little more heat on you this morning. What we're going to do is if you know that the love has been lacking, you know that, that uh, you uh, need to, to uh, uh, have more love. <coughs> Amen. I'm going to ask you just to stand to your feet. Everybody else can sit down because I'm going to pray. And as a result, you're going to uh, be filled with the love of God because you've taken the first step. That step of faith. I want more love. I want more love. I want to see the power of God manifested in my life. Amen. Amen. So if anybody, everybody else can sit down. If that's not you, otherwise stay on your feet. Glory to God. Boy, we're going to have a lot of love in this house. Praise the Lord. Glory. Come on up here, Kathleen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to pray over this crew. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, folks, the Bible tells us that, uh, that God, in Matthew 6, says God knows what you need before you ask. He's well aware of, of your situation. He's well aware of the things in your life that need to change. Now, by you staying up here, we're going to pray. You're well aware of it. 
Amen. Father God, I pray over the people here, Father. God, I thank you, Father, for their obedience to you, their willingness to maybe even be uncomfortable, Lord, and, and allow themselves to, to say, I need more love. I need more of you, God. I need to experience the flow of, of your love from you to me, to, to others, Lord. I pray, I confess, I, I uh, speak love into these people, Father. Say this after me. In Jesus' name, in Jesus. I, determine I determine to walk in love, walk in love. to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, in the, Holy Spirit. In, the in the name of Jesus. 2012, 2012. I, am I am love. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Every need. Listen to this. Every need you have this year will be met according to Christ in Jesus' name. Let, let's close with this. Got to say it. Say this after me. Uh, so as he is, so, are, so am I in this world. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord.